Welcome back, one and all, to another episode of the Ideas Exchange presented by NXpress. I am your host, Paul Castleberry. This is the podcast where we're talking about business, we're talking about entrepreneurship, being a franchisor, franchising, tech, marketing, all of that good stuff, everything that falls in between all of those categories. And today, coming from us all the way from the UK, I have Adam Lovelock. Adam, how are you doing? Very well, Paul. Yeah. How about yourself? Doing much better now that I got you onto the podcast. We, oh, we've so you're with Coconut Creative, right? We've we've had one of uh, your members on before, if you remember, and that was an awesome, awesome uh, episode and conversation. And we had another member of the team with us. Tell us tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do. Yeah, so I'm a director at Coconut. Uh, like you say, we are a marketing agency that specialize in the franchise sector, actually. Um, but we're a full service marketing agency, so everything from uh, content copy to digital websites, etc. cetera. Um, work in the franchise sector, we've been doing 20 years, worked with a, over 200 franchise brands, um, done lots of work with InExpress here in the UK as well. So uh, yeah, and I think today we're going to talk about digital marketing, I think. Yeah, we are. And this is one of those topics that I, I don't think we're, we could easily go over 20 minutes talking about this. This is something I'm really passionate about. I know you and your team, you're very passionate about it. And uh, I guess let's just start uh, with digital marketing. Let, for the very basic bottom rung level of this, what is digital marketing? Define that for us. Wow, that's a, that's <laughs> a hard one to start with. Well, I suppose digital marketing is everything non-traditional marketing, isn't it? So everything since the internet has come into our lives and certainly come into the business world, it's every element of your marketing that you do online. I, I suppose that's the, the very easiest way to define that. So yeah. probably everything you do in marketing that you didn't do pre-2000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the internet's really changed the game, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, re I remember when I was going through college, I had a professor, he said, you know, it was when YouTube was really starting to roll out and be a thing and brands were being more relevant on there and Facebook was up and coming, right? LinkedIn was becoming more of a thing. He looked at this and he said, you're going to find a lot of executives look at all of this in this landscape and say, I think this might be important. Let's just hire some people, throw them in that seat and you go navigate that and take care of that. So I don't have to. What do you think corporations or companies are doing right? And what are they doing wrong when it comes to going into the digital marketing space? Yeah, I, I think I think in general companies now, um, I mean, it, it it's a fairly mature marketing area now isn't it it's been around mm -hmm. for a long time and i think most businesses that i speak to have a very good grasp of what works for them and and what works for one business doesn't work for another i think it's very sector specific and uh, depends on your product and service etc i think most businesses have a fairly good idea of what works for them when it comes to digital marketing but clearly it changes all the time um there's always a new thing um existing things change in, in what works and how you need to make them effective. Yeah. So I think I think most businesses have a fairly good idea on it. And, and actually, a lot of the time, smaller businesses maybe have an advantage and are a little bit um, a little bit more advanced what they do than bigger businesses. I think it, it mm -hmm. takes bigger businesses to some uh, it, it's often a bigger change and it takes a bit longer to um, to get used to the changes that come in the marketing world. And sometimes small businesses are a little bit more agile and can move a little bit quicker um, to test yeah. and try new things. So I, I think I think we're in a position with digital marketing where ma the majority of businesses have a fairly good idea of what works for them, but it is ever changing. And I think, you know, if we think it's changed a lot in the last 10, 15 years, it's going to change even more in the next 10, 15 years. So it, mm -hmm. it's, you know, there's always something new. Yeah, and I think it's going to change faster right and i mean what took 10 to 15 years i guess where we're at now might take two right to change and evolve um i i know here in the states where i'm at uh we have large companies like you know I, i'm not going to name brands but very let's take very big banks for example they they spend millions of dollars on marketing but yet it seems like the digital marketing component of it is really lacking and like you said, I think small businesses have the advantage. Do you see that a lot over in the UK and just kind of in general? Or what are your thoughts there? I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, it, I think one of the big transitions in the last few years is that personal brands have become more and more important. And 
when you say uh, personal brands, you mean like influencers or? Yeah, not, not even influencers really. But I think the, the businesses that do really well with digital marketing are the ones who are often happy to put someone front and center of their marketing. Mm. So it, it's much easier online to connect with a person than it is a brand a lot of the time. So yeah, I think, yeah. and, and we can all think of brands where we know the leader of that brand who has a has an influence and has a following. So I think it's much easier as a small business to to get yourself out there or to get your team out there and start building those relationships online than it is for big corporates. Um, mm. I suppose Elon Musk and Tesla might be a exception to that kind of thing. But yeah. I, think that's, I think that's one of the transitions in the last few years, actually, that that video, uh, sorry, companies and businesses that are happy to put themselves out there online, whether it be through uh, content, videos, podcasts, and to put them front and center of their brand often yeah. kind of have a better success online. I think that's become so essential in, in modern marketing, really, the, the personal brand as well as the business brand. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm seeing more and more often chief brand officers or chief brand ambassadors coming onto the scene. And I really hadn't noticed that before. So that's a, that's a really good point. Now, if, if somebody, let's take a small business, for example, uh, if somebody's just starting to get into this and they want to go down this path, do they have to do it all? Do they got to do the video, the the podcasting, the the posts? What, what's too much? What's too little? Where's the good medium for them to start? I think, I think the important thing always starts with where are the customers and how do people hear and find out about your businesses. Um, I think when it comes to digital marketing, there is a massive difference in between how a, a B2C business would market to a B2B business would market. Mm -hmm. um, for a B2C business these days, if people are searching around your products and services and clearly things like Google Ads and, having, um, and being found on Google is massively important. I think in the B2C world as well, social media and and all of the different opportunities around that probably have a bigger impact than it does in the B2B world. Mm -hmm. So that it's very different business and sector dependent. In the B2B world, it is harder. I think digital marketing is harder business to yeah. business. That you don't get as many people searching maybe for the for B2B products and services as you do in the B2C world. And gaining traction on social media is also harder, I think, for a lot of B2B businesses. I think a lot of the consumer brands we think of are typically B2C, and it, yeah. it is much harder for B2B. B2B is so much more based on relationships and trust, which you can't just build online. So it is different for every business, I think. Do you think there could be a shift, though, with B2B and making, you know, you said that relationship part of it is important, and I totally agree with that when it comes to B2B. But I, I think uh, some companies might be missing the mark when it comes to playing in the digital marketing space and maybe in the social arena as far as building the brand value. Do you think that might be a window of opportunity for the B2B sector to do that? Or I think I think for B2B, I think it goes back to that personal brand um, because so much of it is relationship based. I think if you can get yourself out there um, and really kind of tell your story and build your own personal brand, places like LinkedIn are a great place to do that in the b2b world so actually putting yourself out there and creating content and, and trying to build those same relationships that you need to do in the b2b world offline but instead online mm -hmm. um and i think that's where the kind of personal branding in the b2b space kicks in yeah. more so and it, it and becomes more important so i think kind of going back to the question before it if it's a case of where do you start yeah i think it's really important to understand who your customers are how they typically find your business and how that then relates in digital marketing. If your customers are searching for your product and services, then you're looking at Google. If you're, um, if you need to build an awareness around your product and services and maybe people are not aware of it yet, so they're not searching, then you may be looking at social media. If you're a B2B company and actually typically B2B relationships are built on LinkedIn and that's probably where you need to be. So I think, I think to start it's, it's trying to establish, where the journey starts and how people mm. are going to find out about you and you can build the awareness yeah. and then i think it's a case of not spreading yourself too thin so as you mm. also said what, what do you what do you start with do you start with podcasts or videos and google ads and facebook ads and all these different things do it all right away <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i that's what i see a lot of businesses try and do but actually it's a case of saying well where do my customers hang out the most mm. 
let me, if I know it's going to be LinkedIn or I know it's going to be Facebook or I know it's going to be Google, let me pick one of those and master it. So how am I going to get the most engagement on Facebook and drive the most traffic and, and master that before worrying about anything else? What, what I see businesses do a lot is that they're, they're trying to master three or four things and suddenly TikTok comes along and they want to become masters. Well, we got to do that. Well. We got to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and actually I think the key thing is that understand the platforms and the, the places where your customers are most likely to be and then really master that before worrying about too much else because there are mm-hmm. so many things you can do. You can definitely spread yourself too thin, I think. Yeah, you can get lost in the weeds for sure. I had a mentor, two things he told me. One, he said, if you're going to do this, do one or at most two platforms, right? Master one or two at most and do those really, really well. And two, he said, pay attention to how people contact you. So if somebody reaches out through to you through a text, that's the medium they want to use. So going to, you know, speaking to your point, where, where are these customers playing the best? Uh, is it on LinkedIn? Is it on Facebook? Pay attention to that and really just kind of double down on that area. I think that's, that's really good advice. So where, where are companies getting it wrong? Where are businesses and owners and all that kind of stuff? Where are they getting this digital marketing game wrong? I think spreading themselves. I think that firstly, I think that advice is really, really sound. Um, I think definitely a focus on the platforms are going to work. I think, I think when they're getting the, it wrong, they can spread themselves too thin by trying too many different things. I think also a lot of the time they don't give things enough time. Mm-hmm. So they, yeah. I, I think ultimately to, to really get the majority of digital marketing activities working for you, it can take a long time. Uh, it's something you've got to invest in for the long term. Mm-hmm. And, and you've, you may not get the instant results that you think you're going to, especially if it's things yeah. like building a personal brand. Let's take that as an example. And we're a B2B business. So probably the best way to explain this is in, in my own experience, but we're, we're a B2B marketing agency. So um, I, I know that the best traction we can get is on LinkedIn. So I committed to creating a lot of LinkedIn content, video yeah. content which I started posting on LinkedIn and it didn't, which, gain which by the way, if nobody's, if you're not following Adam on LinkedIn, go do it. Cause he posts a lot of awesome content. There's a plug for you. Thank you very much. Sorry. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I started posting that content out and um, it's a B2B world. It's not going to go viral. I'm not expecting yeah. to get thousands and thousands of views. What I'm looking for is to get a couple of hundred views from people who could be potential clients. Yeah. And uh, probably for the first three months, I had a few likes, I had a couple of comments. And then I went to a couple of offline events and people started saying, I really like your videos. And the people saying that were were potential customers. Mm. And then over time, I got more comments. And then as exactly as you said, then all of our inquiries started coming through as LinkedIn messages, rather than contacting the business directly, they were contacting me directly through LinkedIn, which showed me that this content was working. But that was probably six months after I started. So I committed to doing it over a period of time. Yeah. I could have got a month in and thought I've I've got no business from this. No one's really yeah. commenting. Are people even watching and stopped? And I think that's something a lot of businesses get wrong. They try something, but they don't stick with it. They jump ship. They say it's going under. Let's get out. So I was going to ask you define long time because uh, I know some companies and people I've worked with in the past, they've they said, oh, well, let's stab at this for maybe 60, 90 days. Then we'll review and maybe we'll come back to it in a year. What, what do you think is the magical time frame? I think I think that really differs per activity. So I think if it's the case of you're trying to create content and you're mm-hmm. putting the content out in the digital world, and I think you need to give that time. So I think that's something you need to say. Well, we're gonna for six months or a year, we're gonna we're gonna really put a content strategy in place, and we're gonna post out and we're gonna see how it goes. But we need to give that time. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's something which isn't necessarily, it's costing you time, but maybe not money to do that mm-hmm. kind of activity. If you're running paid advertising, let's say Google ads or Facebook ads or, or whatever that may be, that's costing you money. So there's advertising spend going into that. Yeah. And that's probably something where you would give it, you would give it less time because actually if you're spending money on the advertising, you're not seeing the results coming through over the first six weeks, let's say, then Mm -hmm. you'd have to question how well that particular platform's working for your business. So I think it does depend on the activity. 
um, and whether what what investments going into that are you seeing a return from the investment? If it's a long term content and it's not costing you advertising spend, you'd give it more time. But actually, spending some money on advertising, not seeing a return, then you'd question that sooner. I think. Yeah, there's one word that stuck out to me in that, and that was strategy. Go at this with a strategy. I, I think a lot of people also miss the mark on. Uh, we're just going to go create a few videos, throw it out there, see what happens, and then maybe just kind of try and stay on top of it week after week. I mean, is that, I, I think you would agree, that's a bad strategy. And and what would you recommend for somebody as far as creating that strategy and going at this with it? Yeah, it has to be long-term, doesn't it? It, it has to be, I think, I think a few things really, that the strategy should be a total marketing strategy as well, because although I, I'm firmly, I would say a digital marketer, that, that, I certainly don't believe that traditional marketing doesn't work for most businesses as well. Yeah. And in yeah. my experience, almost every time with any client we work with, it's a combination of activities working together that gets the best results. So digital marketing works better if you're also doing traditional marketing. Google yeah. ads works better if you're also running Facebook ads. They complement themselves. So I think any any form of marketing has to be a joined up approach to, to digital, traditional a range of different activities and messaging um there has to be a strategy at the core of what what you're trying to do yeah and i and i think some sort of plan you know going right back to the basics of this is where our customers are how many do we need to reach how many leads do we need how many customers do we need to make this particularly this particular strategy effective and yeah. then and then working back from there so it's not a case of abandoning tr traditional marketing right it's a it's a maybe a case of complementing is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, it, I think all marketing activities complement each other. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you're, let's say, you're running a big direct mail campaign, if you're mailing out to someone and someone's opening a letter, it, it's really important that if they're then going to try and look for you online, they can easily. So those yeah. work hand in hand there. Um, so I think they always work together and. We work across a lot of franchise networks where we work with multiple franchisees and, and the ones that you see perform the best are the mm -hmm. ones that typically are doing a range of activities rather than just focusing on one or two. Yeah, but they're not spreading themselves thin either, right? It's very strategic. It's thought out. It's, I'm going to have that direct mail piece. I'm going to have that online presence, this, that, and the other, right? Really well thought out. So awesome advice. Uh, believe it or not, we're, we're coming up on the time. Uh, we're coming up on our time together and it's been awesome. I feel like I could talk for hours about this. This is something that I really love and I can tell you and your team really love it. I always love ending these with just some kind of random question, but I think this one's going to be appropriate to what we're talking about. What has been your favorite ad campaign that you've seen in your career? Do you have a favorite? What was it? Oh, wow. So a favorite ad campaign that we've run or just a... With one that you've run or one that you've seen that you said, man, that was spot on. They nailed it. Oh, wow. That's put me on the spot. I know. That's why I love this. It's, it's like, <laughs> oh, put them on the spot, make them feel a little uncomfortable and think. So, yeah, oh, it's a really good question. I mean, I'm trying to think of one that we've run. Um, and we've also run so many, it's hard to pick one. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good I problem to have. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think for me, the, I suppose rather than actually picking one, so I'm dodging the question slightly, but oh, I think the it. most enjoyment I get is when a, a campaign is really well thought out. So, and, and I think you could apply this to lots of famous campaigns as well, but when, when someone really truly understands who their customer is, so the profile is really strong and they then truly create a marketing campaign, which talks to that person it understands the pain points that person has which is going to lead them to want the the product or service to be marketed and that that's all seen from in one campaign and you start seeing those profile people coming in at the end of the fun um that's when i think it's the most exciting and when we we work with clients or you see people achieve that i think it's great you're, you're speaking my language i love it when somebody comes to me and says that piece got this return and I just, that just makes my day. So awesome. Awesome. Well, Adam, any last couple of uh, thoughts or ideas or words you want to throw out there? No, I think just, I think it's really important for, for every business owner now to be really on top of what's happening in the digital world, because I do think the next 10 years, there's going to be more transformation than we've seen in the previous 10 years. What that looks like, it's really hard to know, but with 
VR and um, AR and all of these different technologies being developed, the metaverse, who knows where we could be in the marketing world in, in 10 years time. So I think it's just really important that everyone takes an interest because if people feel their businesses have been transformed in the last 20 years, I don't even know what it could look like in the next 20 years. So I think it keeping on top of this as a business owner is, is essential, whatever business you're in. It keeps us up at night. It keeps us going. It's, it's a fun thing to try and stay on top of. Adam, thank you so much. I'm going to link Adam's profile and Coconut Creative, all that in the show notes here. So you can go and check them out and the things that they're doing, doing awesome work over there. So Adam, thank you so very much for your time. I appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, we'll talk to you later. Great. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Ideas Exchange podcast presented by InExpress. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to show us some love and support, please share it out with others on social media or leave us a rating and review. If you want to know more about what InExpress is, visit InExpress.com to find out what they do and how they can help you and your business. That's I-N-X-P-R-E-S-S dot com. Thank you so much and we will catch you in the next episode.